A London council breaches human rights laws after subjugating asylum seekers to degrading treatment. We're going to read into this more from Byline Times, you guys. Let's go. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Leet here with an article from Byline Times with the headline of the London Council breaches human rights laws after subjugating asylum seekers to degrading treatment. The High Court ruled against Croydon Council in relation to its treatment of a disabled asylum seeker. So guys, just before I give my initial thoughts, if you can hit the like button and share across social media so others are notified of this video. So... We have talked on this channel on a number of occasions about asylum seekers and about the treatment that some of them have been, have been handled. And it's really, really important that their human rights are protected. It's really, really important because we can end up in a situation like this when we as taxpayer are paying out because they weren't looked after properly, especially by a council. And regardless of whatever your feelings about asylum seekers, migrants coming over, if you treat them degrade, if you degrade, if they are found to have been treated uh, degrading or humiliated in any way, shape, or form, just because you don't like them, yeah, expect to be paying out of pocket even more for them. Because I don't give a damn. They're still human beings with emotions and feelings like you and I. And yes, there is a small percentage of them who probably don't come here for the interest, but there's a vast majority of them here who come here who want to contribute and be a part of our society. That, that's a, uh, an argument that I will continue to make very, very much. And I know that one of the arguments that I always get in my comment section is saying is that we don't have enough houses, we don't have enough space, we don't have enough this, we don't have enough that. Well, unfortunately, the reality is, is that you can't stop that. You can't stop people crossing over in any way, shape or form. But what you can do is reduce the numbers. Now, how you reduce the numbers, there's lots of ways we can do it, but... And, and I've covered these on numerous occasions in other other videos, and I'll put and I'll put some links up if you want to check out some other videos on on it. But essentially, what I want to talk about specifically is this is this headline in this story really, and that is this should not have happened. Um, so why did this happen? Who? Why did they uh, treat this person indifferently? And how important are they going to learn from it so that it doesn't waste a court's time, it doesn't waste taxpayers' time, and it doesn't waste the person, the victim's time as well. So all these que are questions that need to be answered when it comes to this. So let's read into it, guys. So a local authority has been found in breach of the hum European Convention on Human Rights, the ECHR, after it subjugated an asylum seeker to degrading treatment for a period of at least seven months. A High Court judge ruled at the end of last month that Croydon Council breached Article 3 and 8 of the ECHR under the Care Act 2014, in what is believed to be the first ruling of such a case where these duties overlap. This is because the ECHR breaches were in response as to how Croydon performed its Care Act 2014 due diligence in failing to access the asylum seeker's accommodate related needs and failing to provide sustainable accommodation for him and his family. Garden Courts Chambers, GCC, represents the claimant, named only as TMX, and were instructed by Monarch Krieg of TV Edwards Solicitors. In a release, GCC said, the lengthy and derailed the detailed judgment provides helpful guide on the complex interplay between the obligations of a local authority under the Care Act 2014 and the obligations of the Secretary of State and the Home Department under Section 95 of the Immigration and Asylum Act of 1999. This is also a rare example of local authority being found in breach of Article 3 ECHR for its failure to comply with its duties and provide care and support including accommodation. Okay, but what, what is it that they've... Uh, what's the details here? They're not giving much detail so far. As far as we are aware, it's the first time that a local authority has been found in a reported judgment to be in breach of Article 3 ECHR by reason of a failure to perform its duties under the CARE Act. Articles 3 and 8 of the ECHR are aimed at ensuring no one shall be subjected to torture or to inhuman or degrade treatment or punishment and that everyone has a right to respect for his private and family life, his home and his correspondence. I think we all agree with that, but again, what details, what's, what's the story here? So the question before Mr. Alan Bates sitting at the Deputy High Court judge was this. 
where an asylum seeker's physical or mental condition is such that they have been they have accommodate related care needs who is responsible for providing the accommodation for that person it is the local authority responsible for the care act in 2014 or does responsibility lie with the secretary of state under section 95 of the immigration and asylum act of 1999 Hmm. I think it's. I think if I'm honest, before we go any further, I think it's both. But we still don't know the the actual story, and I, I'm assuming that byline times are going to share the story behind this. Like what 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 was there actually behind the story? It's what I really want to know, um, because right now we've been told that they've broken. The rules, I, I, I can already see people in the comments saying you can get rid of the ECHR. You have no idea how stupid of an idea that is. You really don't. You want to take away your own human rights? Yeah, try living in a country that has no rights at all. Let's see how far, how long you live there. Because that's, that's, what, that's what this is if you're thinking about taking away the ECHR. Don't even think about that stupid idea. But... <laughs> What is the reason here? This is the thing that I'm really trying to struggle here. Is what 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 happened that put him in that put him in danger and put him in these things? Okay, the claimant's case. Here we go. So TMX is a 50-year-old asylum seeker who remain who claimed remains outstanding. He's progressive, multiple Cirrhosis, MS, and functioning neurological disorder. He also suffers from severe and variety nerve pain called patocilia, and also has a strong muscle spasm. He described the pain he experiences as agonizing, and is a wheelchair user who cannot mobilize independently. Okay, so he's obviously someone who needs a lot of looking after, one-to-one -one interaction, that kind of thing. So if this, if this, this was obviously this is the case, and they need to be looked after. They need to have special needs and, and whatnot. So they need to be put for them. So from June 2022, he had been accommodated by the Home Office under Section 95 of the Immigration and Asylum Act 999 to one in suit bedroom in an asylum hotel facility in the Croydon area. The single bedroom was shared with his wife and two children. Okay, so he's got wife and he's got a wife and two kids there. So that's quite a lot on the wife there. You know, with his disabilities that he has, and the wife has two children, that's a lot. That's a lot for them. So they obviously need additional support here, because this is not enough for them. GCC described this as magnificently unsuitable, due to it being on the fourth floor, as the lift could only be fitted. He fit his wheelchair, and it could not take him all the way back down to the street level. Right. So, <laughs> okay. So already you can see you can see the warning signs here. So. Not only has this man got lots, you see that he's a wheelchair user and he has lots of, um, uh, lots of, lots of issues. He has a wife and two kids, and their best air, best place to stick them was on the full floor. And the lift could only fit his wheelchair in; it could not take him all the way back down to the street level. Wow, that's uh, that's 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 pretty bad. At the same time, the building had steps at the front of the platform lift was out of order the majority of the time. Okay, well that's if that might not be directly the council. I don't know. I, I'm going out on a limb here. I'm going to say that that might not be specifically the council's fault. That things that something that the platform lift was out of order. That might be something to do with the private firm that owns the building or something like that. That may be something at faults there. That by maybe the council should have pursued them to ensure something was this because they had certain people living in the building. So this entire that entirely bit might not be necessarily on the council. I think it's I just want to put that out there before we read too much further. So the GCC explained the bedroom was too small for him to store and use his dis disability related equipment. The bathroom was inaccessible and did not have adapted toilet shower facilities. The lack of space for him to mobilize using equipment was meant that he was bed bound. You have to have a special you have to have special accommodation for someone with his with his issues. Not to mention, as again, I'm mentioning he, he's got a wife and two kids as well. This does not sound very good at all. This sounds like a very poor decision by the, by the council and the, the Home Office, whoever ultimately made this decision. The room was badly vented and TMX 
would become unbearable hot in the summer months, exaggerated by his MS symptoms. The room afforded TMX no privacy from his children for his personal care. His children had to look away or wait in communal hallways when his wife provided his personal care as he laid in bed. God, oh my God. What, why was he not put in at least a two-bedroom? At least a two-bedroom. At least. God. God almighty, this is horrible. TMX's case comes after Byline Times have previously reported how 75% of councils have lodged complaints about the conditions of asylum seeker accommodations at a time when the government had tabled plans to remove their abilities to investigate those complainants. In April last year, it was revealed that the government had planned to legalise hazardous accommodation for asylum seekers by exempting refugee housing from licensing rules on homes of multiple occupations. What? Hazardous accommodation for asylum seeker. Hazardous. That could potentially kill them. That's what we're talking about here. Allegedly. Allegedly could do to them. In certain conditions. Wow. Wow. HMO licenses are one of the primary ways authorities ensure homes filled with large number of people were not initially designed to fit on a fire risk. Dangerously overcrowded, damp, mouldy and otherwise unsafe. We have seen countless stories. Um, I've seen stories from reports and documentaries from Channel 4, from LBC, from Sky News, from the BBC, and in videos of merged online of people living in in these such conditions, and no one is doing a bloody thing about it. However, the Home Office has in the last week cancelled plans to remove housing protections for asylum seekers after a judicial review was brought in by a number of claimants. It said it's long-standing government policy that we do not routinely comment on individual cases. If an individual does not have the right to be in the UK, we will make it make every effort to return to their country of origin or a safer country. Uh, country. The Home Office did not respond to a request for a comment on TMX's case. Yeah, I don't blame them for not wanting to talk about it. The High Court ruling. So during the hearing, there was no dispute that TMX had elig eligible needs for care and support under the Care Act of 2014, and a care package was in place at all relevant times. Indeed, Croydon's own assessment acknowledged the unsuitability of the accommodation. So why was he put there then? Where was the clarity needed in the fact that while it was while it was Croydon was in fact accommodating TMX, the unsuitable property was provided by the Home Office? Then if it's the Home Office that put him in this situation, then it's the Home Office that should pay for this and not the council. So the unsuitable property was, was provided by the Home Office. But on this point, the court found in TMX's favour, which was that the responsibility lies with the local authority. How it... Okay. Okay, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play devil advocate a little bit here, and I'm going to stand up a little bit for Croydon Council, because if the Home Office were the ones who put them in that property in the first place, they're the ones that should be the ones picking up the they're the ones who should be getting a, a, a rollicking for this yeah because no doubt the home office would have been made aware of his issues of the problems that this person had you know not to mention he has a wife and two kids and they still put him in the property of those conditions surely someone would have realized um maybe this is not a great property to put them in clearly the people who made that decision in the Home Office need to be sacked because it's despicable. You're going to tell me, are they going to tell me at the Home Office saying that they didn't have all the, I suppose what the argument the Home Office is going to say is that we did not have all the correct and proper information here. So I, in in that regard, I am going to, I'm going to cut Croydon Council some slack here because I don't think it's, it's entirely their fault because the property was provided by the Home Office. And yes, when it is put in, uh, the, when they are put in, obviously in the local authority, it's their responsibility to look after them going forward. And that's that that in that regard, I agree there. But it was the Home Office that made that decision. From the look of it, it was provided by the Home Office, and there should have been something right there when that decision was made. Alarm bells should have been ringing. 
Someone should have said something right there and then. Right there and then. In handing down his detailed judgment, Mr. Bates explained, the council should, when assessing the claimant's needs for care and support, including accommodation-related needs, have ignored any current or provincial provisions of accommodation under him, for him under the Section 95 of the Immigration and Asylum Act 1999. The local authority should have, the moment, the local authority, the according council, should have immediately been run, should have immediately got him out of that home. Immediately. Having found that the council was responsible for accommodating TMX and his family, the judge went on to consider whether, by failing to provide suitable accommodation to him, uh, had breached Article 3 and 8 of the ECHR. He added, I am satisfied that the claimants remaining in unsuitable accommodation interfere with his physical and psychological integrity to a high degree compatible to the level crossing of a severely threshold for breaching Article 3. I found so essentially because this, his remaining in that accommodation has been, has been a but for because uh, cause of various impacts on him which are intimately connected with the concept of private life for the purpose of Article 8. Those impacts have, in my judgment, substantially prevented him from A, pursuing any meaningful personal development, and B, developing a relationship with other human beings and outside the world to save his immediate family from whom he lives. Morana Creel, TMX's solicitor for TV Edwards said, This is a fantastic judgment for our client and for other disabled science seekers. The High Court has recognised that Croydon Council in ignoring our client's desire accommodation and refusing to resolve the situation when it had a duty to do so, breached its Article 3 and Article 8 rights. He has now finally been moved to a small flat where he's receiving the care with dignity. Thank God he is in an accommodation that is more suitable. For his part, Croydon has said he accepted the High Court ruling and apologised to TMX. A spokesperson added, our resident is being housed by the Home Office in line with the 2008 Home Office guidance for asylum seekers with care needs. Despite our attempts to provide the best possible social care, it's now clear that the unsuitable accommodation was a bar barrier to this. But who made the who made the choice to put him in there? Was it the Home Office or was it the was it the council? Who made that decision? That's the question. We are sorry that our resident had to go through the courts to get this outcome, and we will of course be taking on board lessons from this case to work with other residents. You should I should bloody hope so you'll take on those those lessons. I should bloody hope so. Um, sorry for some of my language, but really, like, like this should not have happened in any way, shape, or form. This should not have happened, people. This really should not. You know, if, if all these things that you've been told about this person's ex uh, issues and problems and all that kind of thing, you, you, you don't need... A, it doesn't take rocket science to figure out that maybe the accommodation you're going to put them in isn't exactly suitable for that person. It's not rocket science. It really is not. Uh, it's just absolutely appalling. I, I do think that the Home Office are more at fault here than the Council, if I'm honest. I think it, I think it's more the Home Office than the Council. But don't take enough... I mean, I think... That's why I'm defending a little bit on the, from the Council, on the Council's perspective, because it says here that unsuitable property was provided by the Home Office. So what that tells me, likely... And you guys can tell me about your situations in the comments below. Please feel free to share them in the comments below if you're, if you're someone who's gone through this. But this tells me that this is the Home Office making this decision because obviously they're an asylum seeker. I'm not excusing the council in any way, shape or form. Let me make that clear. Croydon Council uh, deserve a, a kick up the backside and rightly so for this. But I, but I strongly suspect that this is a. Uh, I strongly suspect the a property decision was by the Home Office and the council um, were not. Obviously, their response to the situation was not quickly enough in any way, shape, or form. But this is a terrible, terrible situation, nonetheless, and should not have happened in any way, shape, or form. <coughs> so, guys, what did you think of this? What did you make of this article? It was a very long one, but it's just um, like regardless. Again, regardless of how you feel about asylum seekers, there is a way to treat people, and this was just pathetic. It really, really is. And if anyone, 
who has any disabilities whatsoever is watching this or are in this situation you you, you it, it, i i might take the same routes uh, and and sue your councils because you should not have to be in these you should not have to be in accommodations that are unsuitable for you you have rights you have human rights and you have a right yet yeah, to be in suitable accommodation so yeah let me know what you guys think about this story and share your your stories in the comments below um yeah if you can hit the like button, we greatly appreciate it. Share it across social media so other people are notified of this video and subscribe to the channel because it really does help me out. And if you want to go one step further, which I know no obligations to do so, you can financially support me in the work I do here by becoming a YouTube member for as little as 99p. Or if you want additional content, you could also check out my Rumble and Patreon exclusive, which both links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I hope to catch you all very, very soon. Thank <laughs> you.